Hello and welcome to College Physics 1, Lecture 7, Instantaneous Velocity. If you drive your car on a straight road at a perfectly steady 60 miles per hour, you will cover 60 miles during the first hour, 60 miles during the second hour, yet another 60 miles per uh, for the third hour, and so on and so forth. This is an example of what we call uniform motion. Straight line motion at a constant speed, in other words, equal displacements are occurring during any successive equal interval of time, is what we call uniform motion or, in other words, constant velocity motion. The figure on the right shows a motion diagram and a position versus time graph for an object in uniform motion. Notice that the position versus time graph for uniform motion is always a straight line. This follows from the requirement that all values of displacement, uh, delta x corresponding to the same time interval, delta t, must be equal. In fact, an alternative definition for uniform motion is an object's motion is uniform if and only if its position graph is a straight line. So again, we see our, our uh, motion diagram with equally spaced intervals, and our graph is the same. Equal intervals of time yield equal intervals of displacement. And so we can kind of revisit our past definition of velocity and use it to give us some new information. So recall that by definition, velocity is delta x, or displacement, over delta t, the time interval. And note that we're using x's here to indicate horizontal motion. Uh, if it was vertical motion, we would use y's. Also recall that by definition, displacement, or delta x, is the difference between your initial and final positions. So that's what I've written here in our first equation. So this is just the definition of velocity written out in full. Well, let's take that exact same equation and rearrange it. And we're going to yield a new equation. Well, it's, I mean, it's technically the same equation, but a new equation uh, for position. So take this equation, multiply delta t over to the vx, and then add x initial. That leaves us with our position equation, x final equals x initial plus vx delta t. Or, if you keep the uh, x initial on the left hand side, delta x equals vx delta t. Now note, this is only for objects in uniform motion. Notice, even we haven't even brought the term up yet, but notice there's nothing indicating acceleration here. So, uh, this does not handle situations where an object is changing speed or accelerating. So be very careful about what equation you choose when we get to more complicated problems down the road. So the velocity of an object in uniform motion tells us the amount by which its position changes during each time interval. An object with a velocity of say 20 meters per second changes its position by 20 meters every second. By 20 meters during the first second, another 20 the next second, and so on. We say that position is changing at the rate of 20 meters per second. So thinking of it as a rate, um, so thinking of velocity as a rate, uh, will help you develop an intuitive understanding of the connection between velocity and position. So earlier we saw that we could deduce an object's position graph from its velocity graph by drawing a position graph in which the slopes everywhere matched the velocity graph. But there's another way to understand the relationship between velocity and position graphs by basically working backwards from your velocity graph. So this is a really unique uh, perspective here. So let's just start with an example. Let's say, suppose there's a, a car in uniform motion at 12 meters per second. And we want to ask, how far does it travel? In other words, what is its displacement? during the time interval between 1 and 3 seconds. Well, mathematically, of course, we can use the equation delta x equals vx delta t, which we showed on the previous slide. And that describes this displacement mathematically. But what about graphically? 
Well, in the graph, we see a shaded region whose height, if you look at this, the height here is the velocity, right? The vertical axis is our velocity. So if we shade this area in from one to three seconds, which we're trying to figure out, the height of this area is velocity. Well, the width of this is your time interval, right? So the width is your time interval delta t. So the area of this shaded region, it's a square or a rectangle, which is length times width, gives us vx times delta t. So you might be wondering where we're going with this, just bear with us here. So again, height is your velocity, width is your time interval, so the area, length times width, is vx delta t. We'll recall from just moments ago, our equation for displacement is also vx delta t. So if we have a velocity graph, finding the area underneath it is the same as finding its displacement. So we can say that um, the displacement is equal to the area under a velocity graph. And this is very important. Now, one thing to make a quick note on, technically what we're doing here is calculus. Uh, this is actually what we define as an integral in calculus, but this is college physics, and so we're doing this with um, basic geometry more so than we are the integrals. Uh, but nonetheless, you are doing calculus by finding the area under a curve like this. So we'll get practice with this in just a few moments, um, but again, going backwards from a velocity graph to get a position or a displacement, you find the area under the graph. Now, things get a little more complicated when you don't have a nice straight line. Because in the real world, objects don't only move at the same velocity forever. And so this introduces us to a new concept. The objects that we've studied so far have moved with a constant, unchanging velocity or have a velocity that changes abruptly from one constant value to another. Well, this is obviously not very realistic. Real, moving objects speed up and slow down, with their velocities changing smoothly. An object's velocity, that is its speed and direction, at a specific instant of time, is called the object's instantaneous velocity. The velocity we introduced earlier was an average velocity, so we were taking an average over some time interval. It is the velocity averaged over a finite time interval, such as, say, one second or one minute, that we're talking about um, in the past. So, just to be clear, from now on, throughout all my future lectures, the word velocity will always mean instantaneous velocity. In other words, the velocity at a single instant of time. So we won't be using the average anymore, it's always this instantaneous value. If an object's velocity changes, as you can see uh, in the graph on the right, the position graph will be curved. So we don't have a straight line anymore because it's changing. So we'll still find the slope to determine the velocity. So if you recall from past discussions, if we had a position graph and we wanted a velocity, we found the slope of the line. Well, now it's curved. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. Well, the idea is still the same. It's, the slope is still the velocity. But we can't use an average segment value anymore. We must look at a specific point in time. So how can we do that to figure out the slope? Well. Imagine zooming far into the curve like you see in the bottom left of the image. If you zoom in close enough, the curve will appear to be straight. So here you can see they zoomed in on this little region of the curve. Well, you zoom in far enough to your eyes, it looks straight in that segment. So graphically, the slope of the curve at any point is the same as the slope of a straight line drawn tangent to the curve at that point. In other words, the slope of a tangent line is equal to the velocity at that point. So this is a lot of verbiage to take in all at once. So first, 
Hopefully you can understand that if you zoom in close enough, it appears as a straight line. Well basically, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line to that point. A tangent line, by definition, is a straight line where it only touches the curve at that one point. So basically, just imagine taking this little straight line now and extending it outward. Imagine taking this, extending that straight line out. So that's what you're seeing on the right hand side here. You're seeing that zoomed in portion, but then that straight line extended outward with this dashed line here. That is our tangent line. Again, a line that is tangent to a curve is a straight line that touches the curve only at the point you're analyzing. Well, now we have a straight line, and that straight line has the same slope as the curve at this point where the time is 4 seconds. So now, we do what we did before. Find the slope of that straight line. And so you could say from um, 2 to 6 seconds, it's a four second uh, time interval. And we have gone from zero meters up to 60 meters. So you've got 60 meters over four seconds as your rate of change. In other words, your velocity. And again, we will get practice with these in just a moment. All right, let's put everything together now and take a look at an example. This is a uh, a pretty big example, it's going to actually take up two slides, so I would strongly encourage you to do your best to follow along with this. It's important, and it kind of summarizes a lot of the points we've been discussing thus far. So this example says, a hockey player moves in a straight line along the length of an ice, or excuse me, along the length of the ice in a game. We measure the position from the center of the rink. In other words, zero, or the origin, is the center of the ice. A position versus time graph for his motion is given. So we're going to start with just two conceptual ideas. The first question will ask, at what point, or points, if there's more than one, is the player moving the fastest? Okay. Asking if the player is moving the fastest is the same as saying, where is the velocity the greatest? Right? So moving the fastest means the greatest velocity. Well, we're looking at a position versus time graph. Remember, the connection between a position graph and velocity is slope. So if this is asking for the highest velocity, that's the same as asking for the steepest slope. So this problem is really asking, at what point or points is the slope the steepest? Well, at A, it's, the slope is horizontal, it's zero. At B, it's pretty darn steep. And at C, it's back to zero. So the answer should be B. The player moves the fastest at point B, where the slope of the position graph is the steepest. In other words, that is the highest velocity. OK. Part B says, is the player ever at rest? If so, at which point or points? Same idea. At rest means zero velocity, which again would mean then zero slope. So in this case, it's basically asking, where is the slope zero on this position graph? Well, at A, for a momentary, or well, for just a moment in time, just for that second, the slope is zero, right at the bottom of this curve. So A, the player is momentarily at rest. And up at C, we see a very clear horizontal line, zero slope, and so the player is also at rest at C. So that answers our first two parts to this question. Those two aren't too bad. But part C is a lot more involved. This one now wants us to take this graph and sketch the appropriate velocity versus time graph. Now we have done this before but never with curves. And so it's a little bit more involved. So what I'm going to do is break it down into parts. So why don't we go ahead and realize that there's a couple different like segments that we have in this graph. Um, so we have this segment here, which separates A, that is not at all a straight line, uh, excuse me for that. And we have, let's try this, B. I'm still struggling with straight lines. 
and then at C. Okay, it's a little bit better. Okay, so uh, pretend I drew those better. So we have a segment from zero to A, then from A to B, and then from B to C. Let's break this up into parts and analyze what's happening here. Uh, let me just go ahead and erase those because that's just going to complicate things. So from zero to A, right? So from zero to A, what is happening, right? So we're trying to find the velocity. So we need to basically be asking ourselves, what is happening to the slope? Because remember, the slope of a position graph is velocity. So our goal is to analyze the slope throughout this whole graph. First thing to recognize is that from zero to A, two things are happening. First of all, the slope is negative because it's pointing downward and to the right. So this is a negative slope. The slope is also decreasing. It's starting out pretty steep and then it's getting shallower and shallower until we're down to a zero slope at A, a horizontal line. So the slope is negative downward and to the right and it's decreasing. In other words, we should be starting with a negative velocity and a decreasing velocity because again, slope is velocity. Okay, at point A, the slope is zero, which indicates we should be at zero on our velocity graph when we draw it. From A to B, we have a positive slope now, it's pointing upward and to the right, and it's increasing. We're going from zero slope, a horizontal line, to a steeper, steeper point at B. So our velocity should be now positive and increasing. At B, we have the steepest uh, slope of the lines, and so we should have the biggest velocity. In other words, point B should be the top portion of our velocity graph when we draw it. From B to C, we still have a positive slope. It's still pointing up and to the right, but in this case, it is decreasing from the maximum steepness to zero again at C. So our velocity, should be positive, but this time decreasing. Back to zero, because at C, we have zero slope or zero velocity. This is a lot to take in, so let's revisit it now with the actual graph pulled up. All right, so from zero to A, we have a negative velocity because the slope is negative, pointing downward. So we should be below the time axis where we have a negative value. It is also decreasing. We're going from a steep negative value to zero. So we go from a bigger velocity down to zero. At point A, we have a horizontal line or zero slope, so zero velocity. Well, from there, we now go from A to B where our slope is positive, so we should have positive velocity values and the slope is increasing from zero to some really steep value at B. So we're increasing our velocity from A to B. We said B is where the line is the steepest, so B should be the maximum velocity. In other words, no value of velocity should be higher than at point B. From B to C, we still have a positive velocity, so we're still above the time axis, but it is decreasing back to zero. So our velocity is decreasing back to zero, again, because the slope is decreasing, 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 until we get to C, or close to C, where velocity is zero for that whole time. All right, so that is a lot to unpack, and I understand this is the first time you're seeing a complicated graph like this, so practice it. Review this slide over and over if you need to. Try to make sense of it as best you can. For some additional practice, let's do four questions to close out this lecture. Question one. A position graph of an object is shown. At time t equals 1.5 seconds, the object's velocity is what? So again, take a few moments to think about it. I'll be quiet for a moment, and I recommend pausing the video before you let me say the answer. Okay.
So uh, we have a position graph and it asks for a velocity. So remember that velocity is equal to slope. Uh, let me use a different color here. We know velocity is equal to slope. So our goal, if we want to know the velocity at 1.5 seconds, which is right about here, oops, we need to um, figure out the slope of this line. And so this is an interesting point of confusion for most students because I'm asking for the velocity at a single point. But how could we do that? I mean, how do we know the velocity at this exact point? Well, recognize that it's part of a straight line. So whatever the slope is at this 1.5 seconds is the same as the slope anywhere along this line from 1 to 2 seconds. So let's find the slope from 1 to 2 seconds. We know that slope is rise over run. In other words, delta x over delta t. So why don't we solve in that way? We have delta x over delta t. Well, our change in position from 1 to 2 seconds is from 0 to 20, so we have uh, 20 meters minus 0, all divided by um, 1 second. So we have a change from uh, 0 to 20 meters over 1 second of time, so the slope of this whole line, or the velocity of this whole line, is 20 over 1, which is 20 meters per second. So our answer here is B, 20 meters per second. So again, please recognize that the velocity at any single point along a straight line is the same as the velocity at anywhere on that line, and so you might as well find the slope of the entire segment of that line itself. Okay, so if we were to do it on the other side of this little triangle that we have, so somewhere over here, recognize that this is a negative slope, so you would expect to get a negative value here. But that's not what the question asks. All right, next question. Four objects move with the velocity versus time graph shown. The question asks, what object has the largest displacement between zero and two seconds? All right, so in this case, we're given velocity graphs and we're asked to go backwards to displacement. Recall earlier in our lecture, we uh, proclaimed that our velocity, uh, excuse me, our displacement is equal to the area under our graph. So we'll say V graph, velocity graph. Right, so we have to find the area underneath each of these graphs. So these are all rectangles, so length times width. So we have one height times a width of two. So that gives us a value of two meters. Notice it's one meter per second. I'll use the units here. And two seconds. So the seconds cancel out to leave us with meters. If you were wondering where my units came from. 1 meter per second times 2 seconds, seconds cancel out, leaving the meters. Uh, anyway, so we have an area of 2 for A. Here we have a 2 by 2, which gives us 4 meters. Here we have a 2 by 1, which gives us 2 meters. Uh, let's see, and we have a, a 1.5 times a 1.5. Uh, actually, don't no, I forget in my head. Um, what does that give you? It doesn't matter. The point is, uh, for B, we have the highest value. A 2 by 2 gives us 4 meters, so very clearly our answer in this case should be uh, B in this case, right? So we're looking for the total area, so basically you're just looking for whichever rectangle is the largest. And so um, B clearly gives us that with our 2 by 2 rectangle. And it, it should be for the last one was it 2.25 I think I'm forgetting I'm in a little brain fart we're all human okay so working backwards you find the area in the first question we just did you had to go forward from position to velocity and get the slope so just be careful uh, you understand when to use slope 
and when to use area under the curve. All right, so here's another one just like the previous problem, but a little bit more involved. It says here is the velocity graph of an object uh, at the origin at time zero. After four seconds, what is the position of the object? So again, I'll give you a hint before you pause. We have a velocity graph. It wants us to work backwards to a position, which means find the area. Okay. Well, this one's a little bit more complicated. Because if you realize this, this is kind of a weird shape. It's like trapezoidal as opposed to just a nice rectangle. So you might not even know exactly how, how to start a problem like this, which is why I put it in my lecture. For something like this, it's a weird shape. You could try to look up the area of such a shape online, but why don't we make it a little bit easier for ourselves and split the work up? Why don't we split this shape up at two seconds? On the left-hand side, we have a rectangle. On the right, we have a triangle. Well, we can figure out the areas of both those shapes with relative ease. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, it's a velocity graph going backwards to position. To find the position, we look for the area under the graph. At this case, um, we're going from 0 to 4 seconds, so we need the total area underneath this. So for the rectangle, we have length times the width, which is uh, 4 meters per second times the width of 2 seconds. So this gives us uh, 8 meters. Okay, so we've got 8 meters for the, tri or for the square. Over here, the area, if you recall, for a triangle is 1 half base times height. So we have 1 half, the base, which is 4 minus 2, so 2 seconds, and the height, which is 4 meters per second. 1 half times 2 is just 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So we have 4 meters. So the area of the rectangle was 8 meters, the area of the triangle was 4. Combine those two values, you get 12, and so our answer is C. All right, last question for this lecture. Masses P and Q move with the position graph shown. Do objects P and Q ever have the same velocity? If so, at what time or times? All right, so I'll give you a hint, they do have the same velocity somewhere, so that can rule out D. Now be careful. A lot of students, with a quick glance, will choose one in three seconds. So right here and right here. That is not correct. That is where they have the same position. Right? At, at one second, they're at the same position. At three seconds, they're at the same position. But that's not what we're trying to analyze. We're looking for the same velocity. Remember, velocity from a position graph is the slope. P has a constant slope. Q does not. So if we want the same velocity, we're looking for what time the two lines have the same slope. So that happens wherever this curve has the same slope as P. And so that happens ooh, somewhere around here where these touch. So right around here this happens and if I trace this down with a very uh, not straight line but you can imagine uh, that happens at two seconds. And so our answer here is that they do and it happens at two seconds so our answer is A. So again this is kind of tricky. Um, in fact this is kind of a question you would actually see on like a standardized physics test for a uh, um, bigger things for actual physicists, but um, be careful. At 1 and 3, the lines overlap, but this is a position graph. So at 1 and 3 seconds, that's where they have the same position. But we're talking velocity. Velocity from a position graph is the slope, so it's asking wherever they have the same slope. 
and that is at two seconds, roughly. Okay. Well, so with this said, um, again, we're dealing with curves in our graphs, which means changing velocities. And when that happens, we put a special name to it, and that is this, the entire basis of our next lecture. Um, so in our next lecture, we will look at acceleration. Until then, thanks for watching, and have a great day.